I'm Nancy Strickland and this video will show you how to develop a gadget for the Windows 7 desktop. I'm going to start by right clicking the desktop and selecting gadgets and you see this window called the gadget gallery open. I'm going to run this one called sample gadget and it doesn't do anything it just shows hello world. I think the easiest way to get started writing your first gadget is just to modify an existing gadget so that's what we'll do. I've got a starter here I'm putting this simple one here that we're going to work with up on my blog so you can download that one to use if you want. This is this sample gadget right here. Now the files for the gadget have to be located in one of three places. The one here is located in my user file under App Data, Local, Microsoft, Windows Sidebar, and Gadgets. That makes it user specific for me. If I wanted a global gadget, I would put it under System Root and then uh, Program Files and then under that Windows Sidebar and Gadgets. There's a third location for Microsoft's own gadgets, but we don't care about it. So here's the folder named Sample Gadget and inside it you can see the two critical files that a gadget has to have. This one here, Gadget XML, is a manifest and it has configuration and presentation information and it's always named Gadget.xml. And then this one here, Sample.html, has the Gadget user interface in HTML and the functionality which is uh, scripted usually with JavaScript or another scripting language. And this HTML file always has the same name as the folder name but the folder has the extension gadget. And then you can have other files here too. This is a simple little graphic that's going to be the background for the gadget. Uh, often you have a file called icon.png. That's the special icon that you would have that would show up here in your gallery. I don't have icon.png for my sample gadget and that's why it shows this default icon in the gallery. Okay, I'm going to copy this whole folder and paste it in and I'll rename it. I'm going to call it Valentine Gadget because it's almost Valentine's Day as I'm recording this. Now I'm going to have to rename some things inside here and the main one that I need to rename is Sample HTML. The HTML file has to have the same name as the folder that holds it so it'll be Valentine HTML. Now this folder name is also and, and HTML name is also the name that will show here in the gadget gallery so it needs to be something that's descriptive of what the, what the gadget does. Now I'm going to open the gadget XML file and make some changes to that. First of all, obviously the name. And then the, the other thing that I have to change is the source code which of course is Valentine. HTML. So I'll save this and now we'll look at the actual code which is my HTML code. I'm going to open it with Notepad just for editing. You can see first of all that it's pretty much just a standard web page. In fact I can open it in a browser to do some testing and see what it's going to do. Now first you can see that what I have here, I can set the style. Now this first part here where it says body uh, sets the background of the gadget which you usually do want to have a background there so the gadget stands out cleanly on the desktop. And then this sets style for the content of the gadget. It's got an offset margin from the background you see here and it's got its own width and height that's smaller than the background and it's got a background color of white. Now you remember how this sample gadget looked. Well, that's how this look here was set up. Okay, I'll come back to this script element in just a minute. I want to first go down to the body of the HTML and show you that there's a, a special tag in here for a gadget background and it has an ID so I can manipulate it in code. Well, what I'm going to do is in the onload method of uh, onload event of the body, I'm going to call this init function and that will grab that element by its ID, which is image background, assign it to this object and then use its source property to set that background source to background.png. And if you look here in my file, background.png is a little orange uh, square and that's where I got the background of my gadget. And then after that, here is a little span for the content of the gadget itself. 
and it also has an ID so I can manipulate that in code and I've got a little extra style here setting the text to blues and hello world is the entire content of that so it just shows that. Now what I'm going to do is make a few changes to turn this into my gadget that's going to be called Valentine. The first thing I'll do is to add a little form here in place of the hello world text and it's going to have a, a button that says click me and on click I'm going to call a change text function that I need to write and then I'm also going to have a, a text box there. Now let me go up here and add that uh, function change text. It's going to take my text box, get my text box, and set its value to Happy Valentine's Day. Now I'm going to go up here and make a few little changes. I'm going to make the body a little bit wider so I've got plenty of room to get it in. And I'll make this content width here 160. And I'm going to take the color out of the content element so that it'll all be the same color. Let me save that. And now I'm going to go here to the file and I'm going to edit this background, turn it pink. And I'd previously made a little PNG file for the icon. It looks like a little heart. And so I've just pasted it in here. And now I've already got a working gadget here. I need to refresh my gallery. I'll right click and select gadgets again. And there it is with the name I gave it. And I can click on that icon to test it. There's my click me button. And when I click it, it says Happy Valentine's Day. That was a simple example. You can do lots more with gadgets, of course. But you can see from this simple example that it's not too hard to write a little gadget for Windows 7 in less than 7 minutes.